Okay, boys or girls, today's story is a very silly one. It's called Pigsty, and it's by Mark Teague. And I know that this is reading for literature and it's fantasy because these pigs are standing up, and that is not how pigs really are. So I know that this is definitely literature and not information. Pigsty by Mark Teague. Really look at the illustrations, the pictures. They're pretty funny today. Monday afternoon, Wendell Futz's mother told him to clean his room. It's turning into a pigsty, she said. Wendell went upstairs. Much to his surprise, a large pig was sitting on his bed. Pardon me, said Wendell. He shoved some toys into his closet. But the pig didn't seem to mind the mess, and Wendell found that he didn't mind the pig either. He decided to take a break. When Wendell's mother came to look at his room, the pig was hiding, but the mess was still there. She threw up her hands. Okay, Wendell, she said, if you want to live in a pigsty, that's up to you. Wendell could hardly believe his luck. Now I can live however I want. He didn't even worry when he came home on Tuesday and found a second pig in his room. The mess had grown a bit worse, but he was able to jam most of it under his bed. Pigs are all right, he said, as long as it's only one or two. In fact, they had a wonderful time. They played Monopoly until late each night and left the pieces lying all over the floor. They had paper airplane wars and pillow fights. The bed became a trampoline. Oh boy, they're having a lot of fun. Then two more pigs showed up. The mess just grew and grew. That night, when Wendell went to bed, the pigs were lying everywhere. They rolled up his, in his blankets and hogged his pillows, too. Wendell told himself he didn't mind, but then he found hoof prints on his comic books. Does he look very comfortable? Hmm. I think it's starting to become a problem. And Friday, when he got home from school, he saw that someone had been sitting on his basketball and his baseball cards were chewed. That does it, said Wendell. I've had enough. And he ran downstairs to tell his mother. Sorry, she said, but it, your room is your responsibility. And she handed him a broom. Is mom going to clean it for him? Nope. He made the mess. He's going to have to clean it up. Wendell started to complain. The mess was too huge. But suddenly he remembered a saying he'd heard that many hooves make light work. He marched upstairs and organized his cleaning crew. All right, he's going to have some teamwork. Going to have those pigs help him. They help make the mess. They should help clean the mess. They swept and scoured, polished and scrubbed. Late that afternoon, Wendell inspected his room and pronounced it clean. In fact, it was a bit too clean from a pig's point of view. So while Wendell, ins while Wendell inspected, the pigs prepared to go home. One of them made a phone call and a farm truck came to pick them up. They hugged and grunted and oinked goodbye. From that day on, Wendell kept his room clean. Except for on those nights when his friends came by to play Monopoly. So who are the characters in the story? Yeah, Wendell and the pigs. <laughs> pigs get to be the characters because they act like people. So a character is who the story is about. And if you act like a person, then you get to be a character. Where does the story take place? What's the setting? Yeah, Wendell's room. Most of the story happens right in his own room. 
And finally, we talk about the major events. What happen in the, What happens in the story? First, Wendell's room is a mess and his mom tells him to clean it up. He doesn't want to. Next, the pigs move in and just make it even messier. And at first, Wendell's okay with that. But then he starts to get frustrated with the mess and that the pigs are making. And last, he decides to clean up the room and the pigs help him. I hope your room doesn't look like Wendell's. Hmm. See you next time, boys and girls.